Hi, welcome to part two of the marketing mixed modeling via FP Robin. Before going all into the video, let's have a brief overview. In part one, we saw what MMM is, and we also introduced Facebook Robin, which is MMM library from Facebook and how it can help us. After that, we briefly saw the tools we need to implement that. We also installed R, R Studio, and libraries we need to run as a part of setting up the environment. So in this video, what we'll do is we will run the demo file that Robin recommends and see how it works. After that, in part three, we will go through the output interpretation in detail and what type of insights we can deliver from that. Let's get started. As we saw in a previous video, there were a number of comments and lines of codes that need not to be run every time and only need to be done only for the very first time. So we will call library Robin. We will see our package. We will allot the fox. We will run only these two lines, library reticulate and virtual environment. And that's it, as we set up the environment. Now, the first thing we want to do in the demo script is import our data. As you can see over here, we are importing two types of data sets. One is DT simulated weekly, and the second one being DT profit holidays. DT simulated weekly is a business data that we would like to change whenever we are going to run the Robin model. Whereas DT profit holidays contains a holiday list across countries from the year 1995 to roughly 2015. So if we run the first line here, we see that the data set is named DT simulated weekly, which has weekly numbers of various channels. We do not see any path here with the file as this demo file comes by default with FP Robin. Once we run it, we can see in the environment and see what the data set looks like. When we click on that, we see that the data set looks like this. Ideally, we want our data to in the same format, which is a time series and headers in the first row. Please note to have data in the same format, that is year, month, and date. After date, we have revenue, which is the revenue variable that we want to predict or maximize. Here we can take either revenue or can take conversions as well. Post that, we have media variables, spend, and in a few cases, impressions or clicks as well. These are added to give the model more input points to run the model on and be more accurate. Also, we see a few more variables, for example, competitor underscore sales or events and newsletter. So if these variables are impacting our total sales, we will mention them over here as well. So our data set needs to look like this. Not always we will have these many variables and we may add or skip any variables from here. But in terms of formatting for the data set, we want a very similar structure. Now let's go back to our code. If we run the next line of code, we see a few lines of the data set in our console itself. That means our data set looks like this. Date, revenue, TV underscore S, which we just saw in a different tab. Next is DT profit holidays. And if you run it, we can see the data set very similar to DT simulated weekly, which gives us an understanding of the data set. And if we go further in, we see that it displays the holidays by date across countries for a number of years. So when we run this and we click on DT profit holidays, we see that it contains dates, holidays, country and year starting from 1995. It has various countries in here. So whenever you will be running your model on, you will mention the country holidays that you want to consider in your model. Next, let's go back to our code. Robin underscore object. Robin underscore object tells us where we want to save the model on our laptop. We can edit our name here, anything that we want. Okay, so if it's Robin underscore video part two, we can add in whatever we feel like. Okay, and primarily our model output will be saved over here. We run this code and as we can see in the console, we do not see any error. 
and in our environment we see under values robin underscore object now the first thing we will do is robin underscore inputs which we will tell robin what to do and we will define our variables so dt underscore input contains our data set that we mentioned above and then dt underscore holiday for dt underscore profit holidays in the hash we have mentioned the code for custom file path as well so in future when we would like to use our own data set for modeling we will be using this line of code and won't be using dt underscore input for dt simulated weekly which is for dummy data set next is we would define our variables date underscore where is date variable where it is mentioned all in caps date these are in caps because r is case sensitive and when we go to our data set we see that in date all are in caps lock on so date all in caps on and we have mentioned that over here with date variable second being dependent variable which is revenue in this case so if we go back to our data set we see revenue which is in the lower characters so we have mentioned dependent variable over here which is revenue we can have either revenue or conversion over here in our case since this is revenue we are taking it as revenue and then dependent variable type so since we have defined revenue in our data set instead of conversion we will be mentioning that we are trying to model our revenue over here if we scroll down we see profit variables we can have trends season holiday and weekday in this but since we have weekly data in our dummy data set weekday won't make more sense but if we have daily data we can know on which day of the week we have more revenue or less next is profit underscore country here we will let the model know which country holidays it needs to consider usually it can only take one country so by default we have taken us but if we are doing the model for germany we can change it to de or some other country let's say italy we can take it over here Post that we have context variables as in competitor sales, events, discounts, if those are impacting our sales. Next is paid media spends and paid media variables. Spend when we have only spend in our data set. But if we have variables like impressions or clicks in our data set, we would be mentioning them in paid media variables. So if we go back to our data set, we see that all these are spent, TV spend, out of home spend, print spend. But then we have Facebook impressions or search clicks that we are ideally taking in order to model our data. So uh, for Facebook, under paid media spends, we have mentioned Facebook underscore S, which represents spend. And then in media variables, we are taking Facebook underscore I, which is Facebook impressions. And similarly for search spend and search clicks. After that, we have organic variables where we generally don't spend and is usually free of cost, but impacts our sales. And then factor variables in events, which can be on and off. As we can see in the dummy data set, event 1, event 2, and so on. So events, NA, 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 and then if we scroll further down, we see event 2. We also see event 1 as well, somewhere around here. So this is how we input our variables over here. Next is window underscore start and window underscore end, which is helpful when, let's say, we have the last 48 months of data in our data set, but we want to run the model on the last 12 months only. Next, we have the add stock we want to use here. We have geometric, vbool underscore cdf and vbool underscore pdf. vbool underscore cdf is cumulative distribution function. 
whereas vbool underscore pdf is vbool probability density function. We will not go in much depth, but let's say geometric will allow us to see results in a faster way and is simpler to use. So let's run this set of codes and see what the result looks like. When we run this, in our console, we do not see any specific error, but we do see that hyperparameters are not set yet. This is because we have not set them yet, and we will be doing after a few minutes. Next, we will run this line of code. And what it will tell us is about the list of hyperparameters that it will be running. So if we run this, we see that for each channel, we have a list of hyperparameters that we need to configure. For example, Facebook underscore S underscore alpha, Facebook underscore S underscore gamma, and Facebook underscore S underscore theta. These three hyperparameters for Facebook. And then similarly, we have for another channels as well, newsletters, print, TV, out of home, and search. Next, when we scroll down, we see that these are the hyperparameters that we need to configure. For example, Facebook underscore S underscore alpha has limits 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. Similarly, print has 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 as well. And then gamma has 0 0.3 to 1. These hyperparameters range need to be set by us. So Robin knows the limits. Currently in our dummy data set, these comes by default and these are in a way the ideal hyperparameters limit. But if we want, we can play with them and can explore and change these limits from 0.5 to 3 to let's say 0.5 to 2 as well and see how it impacts our results. In our case, since we are doing uh, all the modeling on a dummy data set, we are not making any changes, but we can do that. When we run this line of code, we do not see any error. That means our hyperparameters are set correctly. Next, what we will do is we will add these hyperparameters in the Robin input function and run this. When we run this, if we do not see any error, that means whatever we have done so far is going all good. These are our hyperparameters for geometric. Now let's scroll down a bit more and build our initial model. Here we will feed all model specifications via input collect and also mention number of trials and iterations for our model. When we run this, in our console, we will see a lot of additional details. For example, input data has 208 weeks starting from 23 November 2015 to 11 November 2019. It will be built on rolling window of 92 weeks. It would be using geometric ad stock along with 19 hyperparameters that we have added and it will be doing 5 trials and 2000 iterations as we have mentioned over here. We will stop here for this video since this thing will take quite some time based on the data size and the configuration that you have on your laptop. In the next video, we will analyze the outputs as in what they mean and what kind of insights we can have from the model. That is all for the video. Thank you. If you would like to help us build a MMM model for your product using Robin, or if you'd like to explore our services for user acquisition or creative production, please go over to rocketshiphq.com or send us a note at hi at rocketshiphq.com.